In this video, we'll show you how to set up integration with Sentinel-1. The EasyNAC appliance can use APIs to automatically check different types of servers and then automatically learn what devices can be trusted and also learn what devices may be out of compliance. Then using ARP enforcement, any device not meeting our policy requirements can be easily quarantined or restricted. Let's show you how this integration is done. We'll start this demonstration at the EasyNAC dashboard. And we can see in this small environment, there's currently just three devices. Two of them are Windows. Now, one of those devices is going to be this Windows 10 client. And this client is installed with the Sentinel-1 agent. This device currently has full access to the network. And let's go back to the management screen for a moment. We haven't turned on the integration yet. If we click in to see why this device is getting full access to the network, we can click on this reason here and we can see it's only AD managed. So to increase the trust level of our managed devices, we we'll probably want to also verify that they are being managed by Sentinel-1. And I'll show you how that is configured in just a bit. But first, let's turn on the API with Sentinel-1. So to do that, we'll first go to the Sentinel-1 management console. And we'll go down to the settings tab. And then from here, we're going to set up a new user. So the user we're going to create is going to be a service user. So under actions, we'll choose to create a new service user. We'll give the name EasyNAC. And maybe give it a description as well. Now we recommend a very long expiration date. So you have to keep creating this API. Probably uh, four or five years should be good. I'll just set it for two. And then choose what account or what sites will be using this API. We'll just use the entire account. Now with that, we've created the API key. So we're going to want to copy this key. And we're going to paste this back into the EasyNAC appliance. So note up here also that the URL that you use to log into the Sentinel-1 Management Console is the same URL that the API is going to use. So let's go back to the EasyNAC appliance. And we'll go to the integration section under configuration and integration. And we'll scroll down till we get to the Sentinel-1 section. Now the URL has already been configured for us. So what we're going to do here is just paste the API key that we copied from Sentinel-1. And it's a good idea to test to make sure the connection is working well. So I'll do a quick test button and we can do and we can see that indeed it is working. So let me go ahead and save the settings and that'll take a few minutes or about 30 seconds before it takes effect. So let's go ahead and just take a quick drill down as to see what we've actually are going to be checking for with this API. If the device is running the Sentinel-1 agent, we're going to flag it as AV managed. If the device is not talking to the Sentinel-1 in the cloud, in other words, the AV is offline, we'll flag it as such. We'll make sure the agent is not out of date. We'll make sure it's not infected. Make sure there's no patches that are pending on the device, as well as check for firewall status. So a lot of different security checks can be done here. Now the integration should be enabled by now. So we'll go back to the main screen. So what I want to share here is that we can now make the policies more stringent. So let's go ahead to look at that Windows device again. And we can see there's a few flags. There's the AV managed flag because it is being managed by Sentinel-1. And there's also a firewall off flag. Let's go ahead and adjust the policies. We'll go back to the auto device classification policies. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to change this policy here so that to get full access to the network, there's two conditions a device must meet. One, it must be AD managed. And it also must be... Uh, AV managed by Sentinel-1. So I'll make that change. So if we basically take a look at that Windows 10 machine again, it's now being assigned full access because it matches both of those conditions, AV managed and AV managed. But he also has his firewall off. So we also could add policies in here that have higher priority so that if his firewall or other misconfiguration is there, uh, we can basically restrict that endpoint. So let's go ahead and take another look at that endpoint. And as we can see, it still has full access. But what I'm going to do now is change the policies one more time. And I'm going to enable these two policies here 
One of them is going to make sure that the AV is online and talking with the centralized cloud. And the second policy is going to make sure that the firewall is enabled. So let me activate those. Now, once those policies are activated, they will take effect right away. And we can see going back to the dashboard, there is a device that now has limited access. It's being assigned, assigned non-compliant status. That is the same device. And the reason it's being assigned non-compliant is because the firewall is off. That has higher priority than just being AV managed. And we look at that client, we can basically see that you know they're now their connections are being blocked. They're still able to talk to the Sentinel One server, but everything else is being blocked. And they're being told that their firewall is disabled. And we can confirm that here in the agent as well that indeed the firewall con control was turned off. So that's a quick demonstration to share with you how you can enable S1 integration use it to verify what devices should be trusted on your network as well as enforce compliance checks. Thank you for watching.